So the next question I want to address is on the Randall cycle. And this is essentially a question from Caitlin. She says, Paul, I've been hearing a lot about the Randall cycle. I don't fully understand the biochemistry. Does the Randall cycle mean that we shouldn't eat carbohydrates and fat together? Is this going to make me fat if I do this? How should I navigate eating fruit on my animal-based diet? So I think there's a lot of people in the dogmatic carnivore community chirping about Randall cycle, Randall cycle, when I am talking about including fruit on my animal-based diet. But if you really look at the biochemistry underlying the Randall cycle, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So let's just start with what the Randall cycle is. It's essentially substrate level competition that prefers to use the fuel that is already being used in human biochemistry. So this means that when you are doing glucose metabolism, which most of us are doing if we are eating any carbohydrates at a meal, the breakdown products of the Krebs cycle, including malonyl-CoA from glucose metabolism, inhibit carnitine palmitoyl oil transferase. This is part of the system that shuttles fatty acids toward beta oxidation in the mitochondria. Similarly, and conversely, high concentrations of acetyl-CoA and citrate from beta oxidation, which is fatty acid oxidation, inhibit the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex that shuttles glucose metabolites toward the Krebs cycle in our biochemistry. This is the preference for using the fuel that is already in use. So what are we talking about here? We're basically talking about the fact that if you are metabolizing glucose, then you're not gonna be in ketosis and doing beta oxidation. These are not mutually exclusive. And you can do beta oxidation, you can use fatty acids when you are not necessarily in ketosis. But if you listen to the podcast I did with Thomas Allauer, you know that when you are in ketosis, when you are using beta oxidation, when you are shuttling fatty acids, non-esterified fatty acids, which are in your blood through the mitochondria, through carnitine palmitoyl oil transferase, through beta oxidation, you are in ketosis a lot of the time. And that process is going to create physiologic insulin resistance at the level of the muscle. So you're refusing glucose. So basically, if you're in ketosis, if you don't have carbohydrates, your body is going to spare glucose for the tissues that really need it, the brain, the testicles, the adrenals. And if you have glucose in the environment, as I've said on previous podcasts, this is really a signal of abundance for humans and the body's not going to burn fatty acids in the sense of it's not gonna make non-esterified fatty acids from the fat tissue. It's not going to increase non-esterified fatty acids in the blood. It's not going to create physiologic peripheral insulin resistance in that state of ketosis because it can use glucose. Now, your body goes back and forth with these throughout the day to differing degrees. We must be doing some level of beta oxidation throughout the day. It's not an on or off switch, but these processes are in competition to some degree, which is normal human biochemistry. I think most of the time, you don't want to be in ketosis. You want your muscles to be insulin sensitive. You want the glucose disposal. You want the glucose disposal to be happening at the level of your muscles. As you know, if you've listened to my podcast on ketosis, why I'm not a fan, the recent one with Thomas DeLauer, when you are in ketosis, your fasting blood sugar will be higher because you are physiologically insulin resistant. Your non-esterified fatty acids in the blood will be higher. If you listen to my blood work podcast, you know that my non-esterified fatty acids are very low right now, 0.12, because I am including carbohydrates in my diet. When I was on a ketogenic diet, my non-esterified fatty acids were much higher, 0.6. This is physiologic insulin resistance. This is essentially what the Randall cycle is talking about. But I think this gets conflated and misunderstood a lot in these, dare I say, dogmatic, ketogenic, dogmatic carnivore communities to say that you will get fat if you eat fruit and animal fat together. And I am living proof of that as I am ballooning and getting super fat. This is obviously a joke. So what we can see very clearly from thousands of people who are eating an animal-based diet, we hope that thousands more will join us for Animal-Based 30 at Heart and Soil, that when you eat an animal-based diet, a lot of people lose weight. Most people are gonna lose weight. They're gonna become more jacked. They're gonna become more lean. So clearly eating fruit and animal fat together doesn't make you fat. That's not what the Randall cycle is really saying. It's not saying that if I eat a steak with some fat along with fruit, that that fat is gonna get stuck on my body and I'm gonna become fat. Yes, my body may preference burning the glucose during that meal, but later on, overnight, I'm easily gonna go into a fat burning mode. I'm easily gonna moderate my fat stores because I am an insulin sensitive, metabolically healthy individual. I think that many people who are thinking about this and worried about the Randall cycle in terms of actual eating 
the actual eating of carbohydrates and fat together. Haven't read probably the original paper by PJ Randall, which I'll show here on the screen. The title is The Glucose Fatty Acid Cycle, Its Role in Insulin Sensitivity and the Metabolic Disturbances of Diabetes Mellitus. And if you read this, he says, we now wish to summarize evidence which appears to show that the high plasma concentrations of NEFA, which, is the, which are non-esterified fatty acids, in parentheses, or the underlying breakdown of glycerides of which it is a symptom uh, stands in a causal relationship to these abnormalities of carbohydrate metabolism. These abnormalities of carbohydrate metabolism being the things I mentioned earlier, that these products of beta oxidation, specifically citrate and acetyl-CoA, do serve to inhibit pyruvate dehydrogenase. And they go on to say, and we suggest that this is a distinct biochemical syndrome, which could appropriately be called the fatty acid syndrome. We wish to propose further that there are interactions between glucose and fatty acid metabolism in muscle and adipose tissue, which take the form of a cycle, the glucose fatty acid cycle, and which are fundamental to the control of glucose and fatty acid concentrations in the blood and of insulin sensitivity. You can see here that they detail this glucose fatty acid cycle, including fatty acid acyl-CoA, glucose going to L-glycerol 3-phosphate, triglycerides, glycerol, and fatty acids. But the take-home message in this paper and in the actual understanding of this human biochemistry is that the products of human fatty acid metabolism are going to favor the continuation of fatty acid metabolism. Well, that sounds great. We should all be in ketosis all the time. We'll burn all of our fat, except we won't, and we'll get electrolyte problems, testosterone issues, all the things I've talked about in the past. There's a balance here. It is okay to eat carbohydrates from fruit with your fat. This doesn't mean that you will get fat. <laughs> I'm clearly not a fat individual. I'm very lean. If you've seen any of my Instagram or uh, other social media where I frequently have my shirt off because I'm often surfing or just in Costa Rica because I'm in a warm place. But this isn't the way it ends up being in human biochemistry. This is a misunderstanding of the Randall cycle. The Randall cycle is talking about the reasons we become physiologically insulin resistant when you avoid carbohydrates and the fact that when you add back carbohydrates, that process will then damp down fatty acid metabolism. That's normal human biochemistry. We favor glucose in our metabolism. That's fine. You won't get fat. So hopefully that's an explanation of you guys of the Randall cycle, why I don't fear it. I think this has been widely misunderstood, widely misinterpreted, and all of the chirping in the community just needs to stop because they don't understand what they're talking about. And that's, there's thousands of cases of living proof of that in humans today.